white as snow. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? We pray that the Lord this morning, through the self description, will make us to see the necessity of being washed in the blood of the Lamb, and that we will be properly washed in the blood of the Lamb and be clean and be made whole in Jesus' name. Father Lord, we pray, Lord, even at this time, O oh Lord, that we want to study thy word, that you give us understanding and the grace to do as you are going to direct us, so that, Lord, we we'll be properly and completely washed in the blood, precious blood of the Lamb of, uh, of the Lord in Jesus' name. Open our eyes of understanding so that we might understand and grant us the grace to put to practice and speak mightily through me as I teach thy word now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, what the Lord wants to use to teach us in this uh, says the scripture this morning is washed in the blood. Washed in the blood. We are going to open our test to the book of 1 John, chapter 1, verses 1 to 10. 1 John, chapter 1, verses 1 to 10. That is what we are going to consider today as our main test. And we are also going to consider... Revelation chapter 1 verses 5 and 6. But let's look at 1 John chapter 1 verses 1 to 10. First and foremost. 1 John chapter 1 verses 1 to 10 says, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us, that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. This then is the message which we have heard of him. That and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie. We do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sin, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Praise the Lord. This is uh, the main test that the Lord is going to use to speak unto us. But let's look at Revelation chapter 1 also verses 5 and 6. Revelation chapter 1 verses 5 and 6. It says, From Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, blood, in his own blood, and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So we see the Lord is showing us the necessity of being washed in the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is so important. It's something we cannot just do away with. 
It's something we can't do what? Do away with. We must be washed in the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is so important and is efficacy. That is, it's so effective. When it washes us, it makes us whiter than snow. And that is why we really need to know uh, what the Lord wants us to know concerning it and appropriate it for our own good. The problem of sin are from the beginning being the cause of man's separation from God. And even today, it stands as a barrier to his having fellowship, uh, to his having uh, a faithful fellowship with God. It holds over man's wills. It is so strong that trying to, as much as we can, uh, many people have tried, but is not able to free himself from the entanglement of sin. Uh, most people acknowledge the power of sin over their lives, although they may call it by different names such as personal weakness, family traits, natural uh, tendency, that is how I am, and many things like that. But that is not so, as because sin is deadly. Sin is a can can one. And sin is something that will per make anyone to perish in hell fire. Sin is what makes God not to be able to reach out to you. Let's look at the book of Isaiah chapter 59. Isaiah 59. Isaiah 59. Verses 1 and 2. Or rather, we looked at one, two, five. It says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, neither is ear heavy, that it cannot hear, but your iniquity, your sins, have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. For your hands have defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies, your tongues at mortal perverseness. None collect for justice, nor any pleaded for truth. They trust in vanity, and speak, lie, speak lies. They conceive mischief, and bring forth iniquity. They ask cocker trades eggs, and wave the spider's web. He that eateth of their eggs dieth. And that which is crushed breaketh out into a viper. God is now uh, even naming some of the sins. You understand? He said, not that God cannot uh, help out, that like his hand is short, it's not long enough to reach us where we are and render help to us. But he said, it is sin. It is what? Sin. Sin that separates between you and your God. That makes God not to walk on your behalf. That makes God to look away. It is sin. Even we hear Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary when he carried the sins of the whole world. The Jesus that always said, my father is always with me. We understand. But on the cross of Calvary, when he carried the sin of the whole world, he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He looked away. The eyes of the Lord is so pure that he cannot behold sin. So sin is a dangerous thing in the life of a soul. Sin is what will drown a soul in hellfire. Sin is a big weight that is so heavy to carry that makes us not to be able to move forward. Sin is a dangerous apparel that a soul puts on and it burns its whole body. It's like wearing an acid cloth. We know that acid burns the skin. And now, let's assume that a man was able to make an acid cloth and one put it on. It will burn that whole body. So sin is like that. Sin is dangerous. Sin is, it looks pressurable, but pleasurable I mean to say, but it is deadly pleasure. It is what? Deadly pleasure. That is why the Bible says in the book of uh, 1 Timothy chapter 5, 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 6 But she that liveth in pleasure is dead Why she liveth. She that liveth in pleasure Let me enjoy my life. Let me live in this pleasure of sin. But the person is dead. Hellfire is settled. If he or she does not repent 
We understand. He or she that liveth in pleasure is dead. Why is she liveth? So we see sin is dangerous. It is not good to uh, to show sin. Uh, but whatever we choose to call sin does not distract from the fact that sin is a deadly pleasure. Sin is a deadly pleasure. It's a dangerous pleasure that we pies the soul and drag it to hell. There are those who try to escape from the power of sin by entering the wall of a religious group. That is, now say, I belong to this church, uh, maybe because I belong to this church now, it means I'm now free from sin. Belonging to a church doesn't set one free from sin. One needs to be washed in the blood of Jesus. Needs to be washed where? In the blood of Jesus. Ah, that's a popular uh, church. Maybe if I belong there, then it means I'm now free from sin. No. We have seen popular church. Even we see some of their pastors committing different kind of sins. Because being in a popular church doesn't say free from sin. It is being washed in the blood of Jesus. It is being washed in what? In the blood of Jesus that saves from sin, that delivers from sin, that uh, uh, removes that entanglement, that uh, shame, the web of sin that uh, holds that person. It is only the blood of Jesus that can set free. Some believe that education will produce better people out of them, whereby living uh, above sin. No. And actually, educated sinner is more dangerous than illiterate sinner. We understand. Are we getting it? Educated sinner is even more dangerous than who? Illiterate sinner. Illiterate sinner verbalizes sin. It's noisy about it. But educated sinner can be so quiet. He knows how to calculate. How to behave. That is modest. And people look at him, look at her, they say, oh, that person is holy. But educated sinner, they are the one that commit organized crime. They are the one that commit what? Organized crime. That it will be very difficult for police to even trace them. That other people will even be uh, punished for their own sin. We see that education doesn't deliver from sin. Education doesn't deliver from sin. What delivers from sin is the blood of Jesus. When one is washed in the blood of Jesus, that's what we make the person to be free from sin. And some other people think that when they punish their body, punish their body, that they will now be free from sin. And that is why we hear some people go to uh, Portugal and uh, that place they call Fatima and there is a staircase they have to uh, uh, crawl on their knee to climb a very high staircase when they pills and they punish themselves. Some even uh, roll themselves on the floor. They say their sin is reducing. Their punishment is reduced. But all those things are lies. It doesn't deliver from sin. If he deliver from sin, prisoner that they put in prison for years, and after he comes out, we still see that the prisoner that have not been washed in blood of Jesus, he still goes to do what? To commit more sin. Even it looks as if the prison he went to, he went to receive more education on how to steal, how to commit more crime. We understand. So, we see, the Lord is telling us, it is not all these things that man is trying to do to feel with that is going to set himself free from sin. No. It is the blood of Jesus. It is what? The blood of Jesus. Attempting to solve this spiritual problem in these ways will lead to frustration and disappointment. And it has led to a lot of frustration in many lives. Because some feel, ah, when I belong to uh, that popular uh, uh, ministry, I'm hearing the name everywhere, then I will be saved from sin. And when they get there, one week, one month, they see what they are seeing there, they say, ah, I thought it's the way I'm hearing from about them outside, that they are holy, holy, holy. Look at what I'm seeing. A lot of sins. Even their pastor committing fornication and all those things. Say, ah, what is all this? 
then the person is what disappointed is what disappointed because he find out that all what he thinks cannot solve it and those that thought it was education after acquiring all the education and everything they see that uh, their sinfulness is still there their deprived nature is still there they are wanting to covet and wanting to steal wanting to harm others is still there in their heart the education did not remove it they now become disappointed those that punish themselves they scourge themselves they crawl all over places to uh, for their nails to burn and appeal so that they feel pain and think when they feel pain their sins will now go away they find out with all those pain their sins did not go away they only feel pain for nothing they become disappointed that is why we are seeing all these uh, uh, attempts to solve this spiritual problem of sin we fail and bring disappointment and frustration whatever situation has to be uh, provided will have to be sufficient to appease God any solution for sin must be sufficient to appease God because it's only God that can remove this problem and it's only God that can be appeased and remove the penalty of sin because the Bible says the wages of sin is death let's look at the book of Romans chapter 6 Romans chapter 6 Romans chapter 6 verse 23 for the wages of sin is death for the wages of sin is death. For the salary of committing sin is death. When one is committing sin, he's working, she's working. And at the end of it, he needs to collect salary. He needs wages for his work. And the wages of sin is death. The wages of lying is death. The wages of fornication is death. The wages of fighting is death. The wages of immorality is death. The wages of holiness is death. The wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is what? Death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Wages of sin is death. If one continues in sin, he will receive his wages. He will receive his reward. She will receive her wages. He will receive her reward which is death. God in his love devised the way out of sin because he is the creator. He is the one that makes way where there is no way. And he's the only one that can make a way out of sin. Satan cannot make a way out of sin. He can only dig more way into sin. We understand. So, God divides a way out of sin. Under the Old Testament economy or uh, uh, dispensation, uh, God, uh, to bring forgiveness of sin to man uh, for and uh, cleansing uh, from his sin, God provided a means of uh, providing offering, that is, sacrificing animal in the place of that person. Each person that has committed sin will bring an animal and take it to the priest and confess his sins upon those uh, that animal. That animal will now be reckoned uh, reckon as the sinner. The animal will now be reckoned as who? The sinner. Because the wages of sin is what? Death. Then they will now take the animal. You are the sinner. Because the man has passed his sin to the animal. Are we getting the point? Then the priest will now take the sinner now. Who is now the sinner? The animal. The sinner. The wages of sin is dead. He will now slaughter the animal before the Lord. The man has died. The animal has died in the place of the man. The man is now free. But the blood of animal does not save permanently from sin. After some time, we see that the man does what? He commit sin again. He need again another sacrifice. He will still bring animal again. But God has devised a means for a permanent deliverance from sin. And that is the blood of Jesus. That is the blood of Jesus. Nothing can wash away my sin. But 
the blood of Jesus. Nothing can wash away our sin but the blood of Jesus. Let's see that God now provides uh, a permanent solution, which is the blood of Jesus. In, first, in John chapter 1, verse 29. John 1, 29. John 1, 29. The next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and seeth, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Look at the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. So Jesus is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. As many as will appropriate it, will receive pardon. A strong detergent may remove thy death uh, from your clothes. Or a strong perfume, uh, uh, perfume that is uh, talking about deodorant, uh, it may remove your odor uh, from your body, uh, but it cannot remove your sin. The only thing that can remove and cleanse our sin is the blood of Jesus. That can cleanse our heart is the blood of Jesus. It's what? The blood of Jesus. So if one thinks he will take, go and buy detergent or uh, deodorant to use it to remove his sin, he's just joking. He's doing what? He's joking. It's only the blood of Jesus that can remove our sin. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Our, our oh, precious is sin. Is the, is the flow that makes the white as snow, that make me white as snow. No other font I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. Uh, the provision made available by God the Father through the blood of Jesus are all encompassing. That is, it's his power uh, is not limited just for a temporary time, it is for uh, eternal. Uh, redemption. You understand? When you come to the uh, to Christ, uh, to Christ and be washed in His blood, He wash you true and true. He wash you out true and true. Not that He wash lying away today. He wash fighting away tomorrow. Or, no, He wash you true and true. We understand. He wash you out true and true, and you are cleansed, and you are pure, and you are fully accepted by the Father, and we are cleansed by His blood, redeemed through His blood, and made near by His blood, made to be at peace through the blood of His cross, and our boldness to enter into the holies, holiest by His blood. We see, all these things are just by the blood of who? Jesus. We know in the olden days, in the Old Testament, even those uh, that are already, that brought animal that confessed their sins on the animal, and the animal was slaughtered on their place, and the blood was sprinkled on the altar for the forgiveness of their sin, and their sin rolled away, they can't enter the holies of holies. They can't enter away the holies of holies. That is, in the temple, in the tabernacle. In Israel, there is a place for the congregation, the sanctuary, there is a place for the priest, and there is a place that is the Holy of Holies. Only the high priest can enter there once in a year. And when the high priest is entering there, the, uh, he has a, uh, a kind of uh, belt around him, and uh, the, his uh, clothes has bell all around, small, small bell all around, so that when he's moving, is making noise. You understand? They will now tie a long rope on his, uh, on him when he's to enter holies of holies. So that if he does anything wrong and die there, they will not hear the sound of the bell again. When they wait for some time, like an hour or something like that, nobody can go in to bring out his dead body. So they have to use the rope to pull him out. We understand? The blood of the of animals that were sacrificed for the people to cleanse them cannot take them, make them enter the holies of holies. But the blood of Jesus grant every one of us access to the holies of holies. Talking about heaven. We understand. It grants all of us what? Access. That we can pray. Not only the high priest now can go uh, there, you understand we all now can go and approach the throne of mercy. 
we all now can go and approach the throne of mercy. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood that uh, uh, washes whiter than snow and make us whole. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 4. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14 to 16. <clears throat> Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into, heaven, into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession, for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmity, but was in all point tempted like we are, like as we are, Yet without sin, yet without what sin, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. You see, we now have access unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. A grace to continue living, pleasing God. So it's the blood of Jesus that gives us access to all this, that gives us access to all this because without the uh, uh, shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. There is no what? Remission of sin according to the word of God. Uh, because it is the blood of Jesus that makes it possible. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9. We are reading from verse 11. To verse 14. But Christ, being come, had uh, been come an high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is not uh, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood. By what? His own blood. Because when the high priest enter once in a year, he goes with the blood of the animal. We understand. But Jesus went with his own blood he entered in once it's not every year is jesus dying every year no the high priest every year he has to go into the holies of holies with the blood of animal to sacrifice for the people but jesus went in once into the holy place having obtained eternal redemption for us he, he obtained what for us eternal redemption for us to see how powerful his blood is I didn't say his blood was. His blood was powerful. He's powerful and he will ever be powerful. We understand. So, you see, 13. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of the an ephah sprinkling the unclean sanctified to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit Offered himself without spot to God. Purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Purge your conscience from dead works. All those things one try to do by himself, feel that we make him holy. You see, the blood of Jesus will purge your conscience, conscience I mean, from dead works that you might be able to serve the living God as it ought to be. We understand. In truth and in spirit. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So we see, this is what the Lord is showing us, that the blood of Jesus is so powerful. So we see, these spiritual benefits can be yours and can be ours uh, today. It can be yours. If you are not experienced uh, it, if you are not been washed in the blood of Jesus, you can come today and be washed in the blood of Jesus. And you will, uh, if you fulfill the condition, sin must be confessed and forsaken. What must you do? Sin must be confessed and forsaken. You don't confess and cling to it. You confess it and forsake it. And God is just and faithful. God is what? Just and faithful. To do what he says he's going to do. First John chapter 1. First John chapter 1. First John chapter 1. Verse 9. 
If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Not only that, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Not that after he has forgiven us, he leaves us in sin. No, he cleanses us from all unrighteousness. So verse 8 and verse 10 is actually helping people to push them in order to confess their sin and allow the blood of uh, Jesus to wash them and cleanse them from all unrighteousness. That's why I say in verse 8, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. Examine yourself. Examine yourself. If you say you have no sin and you have sin, you are deceiving yourself. You say, examine ourselves and I will deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. Look at verse 10. He's still trying to push one to take this opportunity and make use of it and not miss it. Look at verse 10. If we say we have, uh, we have not sinned, we make him a liar. And his word is not in us. We understand. Why is he bringing and bringing this? Because he wants everyone to appropriate it and escape. And do what? Escape. Just like uh, the angel said to Lord, he said, escape for your life. In Genesis chapter 19. In Genesis chapter 19. Genesis chapter 19 verse 16 and 17 and while he lingered the man laid hold upon his hand and upon the hand of his wife and upon the hand of his two daughters and the Lord had the Lord been merciful unto him, and they brought him forth, and set him without the city. And it came to pass, when they had brought them forth abroad, that he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. You see, just like the Lord is using... Uh, Apostle John here at, in this writing by the uh, uh, Holy Spirit to push and make everyone, to drag everyone out of the city and say, escape for your life. Now, appropriate, confess your sin and forsake them. And God is faithful and just to cleanse us, of, uh, to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's the same way the angel uh, dragged uh, uh, Lord literally out of the city and say, escape for your life. We are not running physically with our left to escape now but the way we escape is to run to jesus is to run to who to jesus and be washed in the blood of the lamb and confess and forsake our sins uh, and all sins and receive pardon and forgiveness uh, which comes from the lord pardon and forgiveness must be sought from the lord christ must be fully enthroned one must put christ as the king of his heart he must be fully enthroned in the heart without any rival there must be nothing or no one struggling with christ in your heart christ must be king of your heart he must be what king of your heart not christ and somebody sharing the throne together no christ must be king of your heart christ's blood is god's remedy for our sin Christ's blood is God's remedy for our sin. There is no other medicine we can take to heal this sickness of sin. Jesus, the blood of Jesus, Jesus is the medicine you need. Is the medicine everyone needs to cure that, this sickness called sin. You can avoid going to a lost eternity by exchanging your sins for his righteousness through his shed blood. That's how one can escape hellfire. He brought eternal salvation to us so that we might escape eternal damnation, which is in hellfire. Those who will reign with Christ are those who have washed their robe and made 
them white in the blood of the Lamb. Let's look at Revelation chapter 7 verse 14. Revelation chapter 7 verse 14. Revelation chapter 7 verse 14. And I saw unto, uh, and I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulations, of great tribulation, and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. We have the opportunity now to be washed in the blood of the Lamb. What would your response be? Will you call upon the Lord now and let the Lord wash you whiter than snow? Will you confess your sin to him now and forsake them and accept Jesus fully as your Lord and Savior? You can talk to the Lord now. You can talk to him now. Talk to him now. Talk to him now. Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord God, because you are a wonderful God. You are a God of glory. You happen to make at the beginning and the end. We praise and worship, Lord God, for what you've done. We thank you for thy word we've heard. We thank you for the way you've spoken unto us. We pray that which you have spoken unto us, you grant us the grace to put to practice in Jesus' name. Amen. That, Lord, will be white, wash in the blood of Jesus and be made whiter than snow. Thank you, Father, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.